comes to the TV show The Full Monty, I'm going to be completely honest, I actually found it rather enjoyable. Now before we get on with the review, I'd just like to say I've never seen the film before, as it didn't really appeal to me. The way it was advertised and the way people talk about it, it just felt it was about a bunch of men stripping. Now watching the TV show and reading about the film, I know it's nothing about that. I mean, it's a bit of a portion of the film, but it's not what it's about. And another thing that didn't really help me <laughs> in wanting to watch this film is when Robert Carlyle described it as... I thought it was a load of fucking pish to do <laughs> Now, when it comes to the first episode of the show, I have to be honest, it was an okay watch. There were moments of it I didn't particularly enjoy, but I did like how they set up the characters, showing the struggles they go through, and somewhat showing from when they were to how they are now. I did find that very interesting. I really enjoyed how they show characters and the lengths they would go to get money, even if it was considered highly extreme. Now, what I really enjoyed about this show is the political message that we get throughout the entire show, uh, at least after episode one. We see, even though they're not blaming the government, we know that this is basically the government's fault for why this is happening. That being having benefits taken away, having schools severely severely underfunded, having to make really tough choices just to secure a good enough budget for the school. We're seeing how families are living in modern society, dealing with food shortages and so forth. And um, one of my favourite things is they showed how triple down economics in a certain case and just showing how it doesn't work and if anything there's always going to be one that's left disadvantaged and in very vulnerable state. I just I really enjoyed all of that and I think they told that very well. Now another thing I loved about this is the individual episodes we get from at least episode 2 all the way to episode 8. Uh, the first one of my favourites which really caught my eye is the character Dave played by Mark Addy. We see that he is somewhat befriending a school child and really trying to help him out but he lets his mouth slip and accidentally causes a bit of a mistake. Completely accidental, he was saying it in a way to help, but it causes a mistake. It was a very interesting episode. The next was episode 3, where we see the character of Gaz. He discovers that one of the mentally ill patients he looks after is actually quite talented, and he tries his best to help him somewhat rediscover and get his creative art back, but he realises that he is meddling with something he's not too knowledgeable about, and it goes quite awry. One of my favourite ones, though, and I think it it really had a great message was episode 5 as we see the character Darren played by Miles Jupp. We see that this character takes somewhat sympathy towards his neighbours who are kicked out of their house and made homeless by the neighbourhood watch which he is a part of but he had nothing to do with although he did make a complaint but directly to that. He takes them on as temporary lodges and through this episode we see a lot of humanity going throughout, not only through Darren and what he does later throughout the episode, but the family of refugees. They actually show them as normal human beings just struggling in Britain, which is something the right-wing media and newspapers would have you believe otherwise. And it's just nice that they show refugees as just a normal, nice, hard-working people. The only real difference is their skin colour and to an extent their culture. That's really it. And that's what I really enjoy about the entirety of this show is there's a lot of humanising, not only just with refugees but the, all the characters as well. It really shows and really makes these characters feel very real and there's a somewhat sense and hope with this as even though yes this is community is struggling financially and sometimes even mentally, they somewhat seem to be very much together and even go through very tough situations for one another. It's actually very somewhat nice and hopeful to watch and the best way to see this is for the character of Horse. He's a elderly disabled gentleman and he's a very kind person but sadly in modern society that is taken advantage of and we see that through this show he's slowly picked at and it's really sad to see the situation he goes through as he is very kind-hearted he always puts others first before himself and he doesn't like the fact that he gets pitied or somewhat seen as a scrounger even if he desperately actually needs the items they're giving him somewhat out of pity and I really enjoyed that through his character they somewhat break all the stereotypes that people on benefits get as 
he is not using the money to buy alcohol, he's not using the money to get drugs or to prostitutes or any of the stereotypes that people on benefits are getting. And it's actually really sad that through this character we somewhat learn the lives of millions of people who are on benefits and how they get treated as scroungers, benefit thieves when literally most of them in the same situation that the character of Horse is in. Another thing I really enjoyed is how they somewhat show stereotypes in the show but then really expand upon them and somewhat show more of truth. We get this from the character of Gaz's daughter Des, who is a schoolgirl. She comes off as a criminal in the making, as she skips school, as she somewhat gets herself and others into trouble, committing all sorts of petty crimes. But when we dive deep into her, she has this real passion for music, which sadly she can't really do at home, and that's the only reason she goes to school. And once the music department has been closed, she sees no real way of pursuing her musical career and somewhat sees school as as unimportant to her, so I really found that interesting how we take an assumption and really dive into it. Now, as much as I enjoyed all of those things, this show has a lot of things to criticise. Starting off with the first episode, which to me had a lot of lazy writing, a lot of unfunny dialogue, which is somewhat attacking the Me Too movement and Snowflake Generation, really just showing that they don't know what that is about, and just like belittling it and showing that it's somewhat exaggerating what it actually stands for. It really just shows how bad the writing was, or what you thought it would be, and it just shows that it's aiming to a certain demographic and excluding a certain audience. Luckily, this was only in the first episode and I think onwards they really show their writing, but most people would start with the first episode as the most important thing and to have this, you're losing quite a lot of audience. Another thing I wasn't particularly a fan of was how, as the show progressed, the lack of humour was in it. Now, the show does have a lot of great characters and a very hooking plot, but if that was all removed, there's nothing much to the show. It's quite a deal breaker in my eyes. Another criticism is the character Des. I felt like after episode 3 her plot wasn't as interesting. They tried their best, but if anything I felt like her plot was getting in the way of better plots. And my last criticism is about episode 4, which I thought was probably the second worst episode after episode 1, as they take a character who again personally speaking found very boring and tried to make him exciting and for the first half of it it seemed okay but it really felt flat during the second half of the episode and if it wasn't for the other characters who really made it a more entertaining episode it would definitely be a shut off type moment. Now overall I did find this show very interesting and entertaining. Really enjoying the characters, really enjoying the political message that surrounds this show, really enjoying the plot itself. I think there were interesting moments of humour but I wouldn't go back for it. I'd go back more for the character development and humanity that appears in this show. Is it good? I'd say it's quite good. Rating wise I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now when it comes to recommendations I have plenty. First of all because of the political messages that surround this show I would recommend the film I Daniel Blake. I definitely spotted this from episode 3 onwards. Uh, you see this a lot with the character Horse. I think both Daniel Blake and Horse share a lot of similarities up until the very end. So definitely check that out. Now, I think Robert Carlyle did a great performance in this and it's funny as the film and what I'm about to recommend both came out in the same year and it's interesting just seeing the characters being very night and day. Obviously I'm talking about Begbie from Train Spotting. In the film Train Spotting, his character is a very violent, alcoholic sociopath. And in the Full Monty, obviously the TV show, he's a very Peter Pan character. He means well, but he never really thinks things through. Definitely interesting. Definitely check that out. On to my next recommendation, I would recommend The 51st State, another comedic Robert Carlyle film, except he's playing a scouser. And this time, it's not just him. We get the great Paul Barber, who plays horse in that film as well. Very small moment, but definitely enjoyable. On to recommendation for Paul Barber, most people may recognise him as Denzel, the truck driver from Only Fools and Horses. I think he's a very funny character, he gets into all sorts of situations, mainly because of Del Boy. Definitely recommend. Now, because Mark Addy is in this show, I know most people would probably say Game of Thrones because of his portrayal of Robert Baratheon. I'm not going to say that. For me personally, I recommend 
the TV show The Thin Blue Line. Yes, he only appeared in one season, and that was the second, but I think he did a great performance. Very funny, and definitely really added to the second season. Definitely check that out. But because this show has scenes set in a school, and there's a lot of conflict between students and teachers, I would definitely recommend the TV show Waterloo Road. Whilst I would say both shows have teachers going out of their way to help out the students, I would say in Waterloo Road it's definitely more dramatised, but still entertaining as hell. And lastly, Miles Jupp. I think he's a very funny actor slash comedian. He was brilliant in the thick of it. He only appears in two episodes but still worth watching. And then his appearances on Frankie Ball's political panel show Frankie Ball's New World Order is definitely worth checking out. He is very funny in each and every episode he appears in. Those are my recommendations. This has been my review for the TV show The Full Monty. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed please like and subscribe but most importantly thank you and have a nice day.